In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can code up your own SVGs. Hi, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Today's video is all about SVGs and how to code up your own SVGs. This video is the second part of a series where we're looking at the complete basics of SVGs. It's really for noobs just like me. SVGs used to really scare me. I didn't really understand how they worked and now that I am understanding them, I want to share that with you. If you missed the first video of this series, I encourage you to go and check it out. It's why we want to use SVGs and the link for that is in the description below. For now, we're going to be looking at how we can code them up ourselves. Coding up SVGs is what made them not scary to me anymore. Understanding how to actually type it in, what every little piece was doing, it made me realize they're not as complicated and as scary as I originally had thought they were. It really does go a long way into helping you understand SVGs and what's going on behind the scenes and also what a lot of the possibilities of SVGs really are. So with all that out of the way, let's go and jump into VS Code and check them out. So here I have a nice blank page. The first thing we're going to do is put in the very basic code that we need, which is just SVG and close SVG. Uh, and everything we're going to do is going to come inside of this. When we put in the SVG tag like this, it's a little bit like using the style tags up in the head of our document. When we add a style tag, we're telling the browser that everything inside of here is going to be CSS. With an SVG tag, we're telling it that the code inside of here is XML, so it works a little bit differently. This is one of the things that scared me the most when I first started looking at it, but for the most part, it's actually pretty straightforward. So to see how straightforward it actually is, let's start by making a circle. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come on here and I'm actually going to give this a width and a height. And you'll notice I'm not putting units. If you want to put units, you can, but if you don't put units, it just assumes that they're pixels. Um, you'll also might be aware of the viewport that we're going to be looking at that in another video though. So for now, we're just going to stick with width and height. So to make a circle inside of here, what I'm going to add is a circle tag or a circle like this. Now you have two choices when you're uh, putting in things here. You'll notice it's open circle and closed circle. You do need the closing circle, but there's never anything that's actually in here. Everything just becomes attributes on the opening tag. So if you'd prefer and how I prefer to do it is to have it as self closing. Either way is completely valid and will work just as well. This just saves you having to have the uh, closing tag on the outside, which is sort of not doing anything. Now, if you know with HTML5, you didn't need, if it's a self-closing tag, you don't need to close it like this. That's not the same as this because we're not writing HTML here. We're writing XML and we need to write the closing tag for something that's self-closing here. Now, if I save that and look, there's actually nothing on my page at all. So we need a little bit more here on my circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is put an R. An R on a circle will reference the radius. So I'm just going to do 125 and I'm going to hit save. And look at that. We sort of have a circle coming in there. It's not exactly what we want, but you can see there is a circle sort of showing up. Um, so what we can do now is also add a CX and a CY. So this is to tell it where the center is on the x-axis and this is where the center would be on the y-axis. Um, so right now the my SVG itself is 250 and 250 in height so if I want the center it would be half of that so we'll do that 125 and 125 and I'm going to hit save and you can see now I actually see my whole SVG it's not being clipped off. Now the CX and CY are just properties used for circles and as well as um, ellipses and radial gradients. So you might see it pop up a few other times depending on what you're doing. So that's the CX and the CY here. Now, um, you notice when I first did it, it was clipped. And just to give you a bit better of an idea of what's actually happening here, let's move this. Here we have the center on my X axis. So if I change where the center is on there, let's just make it uh, 225. So it's moving it further along and you know that the width and the height of this, so I have a 250 by 250 here. So it's sort of a box here and I can move my circle around there. And if the circle's outside of that, it does not overflow out. It's just going to clip it like that and we lose a little part of it. So let's save that and put it back right where we can see it. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do on here. Um, and actually I'm going to change my windows here a little bit to make them a lot bigger. There we go. Just because um, we're going to have a lot of code sort of on this here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to look at is that we can change the color of the background. Now it's not background. 
that wouldn't work. Um, in this case, we want to do something called fill. And fill is pretty much just like background. And if you're coming from a uh, vector software, you'd probably know fill. So fill, just to take a look, we can change that to red, and my circle will change to red like that. Or if I put in a hex code, save, you can see that it changes color. Now just like I have a fill, I also have a stroke. So I can write stroke, and stroke is basically a border. So stroke, and let's say this one is going to be black. And you can see that now I have a border on that that's black. And we can also change the size of it, which is going to be stroke width. And let's make this 10 pixels so it's fairly big. But you'll notice there's a bit of an issue, and that's that my stroke is disappearing a little bit. And what's happening is the stroke is half on the inside and half on the outside. So I have five pixels on the inside and five pixels on the outside there. So the problem is now that my radius is too big because uh, of my stroke that's on there. So let's come and change the radius here to 120 and hit save. And now we get the entire stroke on there and we can see the whole thing. Now what we can also do is we can come and change things up around here a little bit. So let's just change this to red for fun. And um, on the fill, if you don't want to fill, you can turn it off by putting none. So with none, it just completely disappears. Now if you don't include the fill, it's going to default to black. So if you want no fill on it, you really have to make sure that fill is set to none. And then I only have a stroke. Now, we only have one shape in our SVG, but we can have a lot of shapes in here. So let's come and add in a new circle. So I'm going to come up to here and do another circle with a self-closing tag on it. And uh, in this case, I'm going to give it a smaller radius. So this number will be smaller. We'll go with 70. And I'm going to give it a CX of 125 and a CY of 125. Before I hit save, just think for a second, why am I giving these the same CX and CY as here, even if it has a smaller radius? Um, and it's because, if you remember, the CX is the center on the X, and the CY is the center on the Y axis. So I still want these to be centered directly in the middle. It's just going to be a smaller circle. So if I hit save, I get a black circle right in the middle of my other one. And we can come and give it the same thing. So fill equals none, stroke equals red, and stroke width is equal to, I think I did 10, yep. Yeah. I put 10 pixels on here. Again, you don't need pixels, units. And here I didn't sell a uh, stroke rate. Not sure what happened there, there we go. Um, and you can see that I get a second circle inside and we could repeat that and add a third circle and a fourth circle and do as much in there as we want. But let's go and look at how we can create another shape instead of having more of the same. Um, so the next shape that I'm gonna look at is a rectangle. Um, so for a rectangle, it's just rect. You're not writing the full rectangle word out, which is good because I'd probably spell it wrong. Um, but just rect like that is nice and easy. So once again, I'm gonna do a self-closing tag on that. But if you came and did it like this, that's completely fine too. And in fact, this is how it will be rendered in the browser, even if um, you do that. If you go and look in the DOM, with you inspect element, you're going to see it with a, its own uh, closing tag on there. Um, so now here we have a radius, but rectangles don't have radiuses. And we have a CX and CY, and we don't get any of these three in a rectangle. The radius makes sense. And the other one, it's because instead of um, the center, we're defining where the top left is. So just to take a look at this, I'm going to do x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So you can see it's not a cx and a cy, it's just an x and a y. So this is the top left of my rectangle. So um, I'm also going to give this a height, and we'll just go with 100 pixels for now, and a width of 100 pixels for now, and hit save so we can see our rectangle in there. Um, so just to show you how we can play around a little bit with it, if I do 25 here and 25 here, it should move across by 25 pixels and down by 25 pixels. And there we go. It moved it around a little bit. Um, let's make it a bit bigger than that, actually. And there we go. Now, this is perfectly centered, but you sort of have to do some math on that to actually get that to happen. So I have a height and width of 200, So, and I have a total of 250 here. So I'm going tw 25 because I'm starting 25 pixels across. So 25 plus 200 is 225, plus another 25 is 250. So that means this is perfectly centered right in the middle. And if I do want this to be in the back, 
I can put it as the first thing and then it will go behind the other things there. So remember, it's not background, it's not color, it's fill. So my fill can be equal to, let's say, light blue. And we get that inside of there or on, uh, behind my circles there. So things like stroke and stroke width, they're also going to work on my rectangle. Um, and one other thing that we can do that's a bit unique to rectangles is we can give them rounded corners. So I'm going to do it right in the front here just so you can see it a little bit easier and we don't get side scrolling. Um, so to do that, it's Rx, which is radius X of, let's go with, I don't know, 25 again. And Ry is equal to 25. So if I save that, we get round corners on there. And the bigger the number, the bigger the radius. Now, actually, let's just go and move this to the front so you can see it a little better. And let's go with steel blue. Just there we go. Just so you, we can see a bit more what's happening with my corners here. So you can see that they're rounded now. And with um, this, it's my x-axis and my y-axis. Now, the way that this works is a little bit strange. It's a bit like when you give a rounded corner with CSS in the sense that where does it start rounding on this way and then where does it start rounding here? So I'm going to make the RY here a lot bigger so we can visualize it a little bit. So you can see on the Y, the up and down axis, they're much more round now. So it's going 100 pixels up. So if we start from the top, it's going to take 100 pixels before it stops curving. So from here, it's 100 pixels up and we start getting this nice slow... Uh, curve here and then we get the little 25 here on this side and if I switch this to Zero though, this is where you get a little bit of an unexpected behavior because if I save that they go back to being um, Perfectly square and that's because on the x-axis the curve is zero So if this isn't curving at all, we can't curve this other one either um, But as long as I have something on that it's you know, this is going from 100 pixels to here, how far in should it go on the x-axis and how far in should it go from the y-axis. Now the other thing here is if I do 100, 100, it's going to give me a perfect circle and that's because my height is 200 pixels. So it's going, um, and this is sort of like doing a border radius of 50% on a circle um, or on a rectangle or square. This is sort of like doing a border radius of 50% on something with CSS because the curved edge is starting at 50% of the way in, you know, it's starting here and it's starting it there, so it makes it a perfectly round corner. So let's make this a little bit smaller again and hit save. And actually, I'll make it a lot smaller than that. Let's just go with 15. So we can still. Okay, so we'll leave it like that for now. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is a line. Um, so if I come on here, you guess it probably line, just like that. Now, lines are literally just straight lines um, that take they need to have a starting point and an ending point. So they use an x1. So we'll give it an x1, let's say it's at 10. And we'll give it a y1. And we'll start that at 125, which is right in the middle of my SVG. So again, we're going the x-axis and then the y-axis. So I'm going 10 pixels this way, and then I'm going 125 pixels down. And that's where my line is going to start. And then I want to tell it where my line is going to end. So then I can do a x2 is equal to let's say 225 and a y2 is equal to 225 and if I hit save on that now we don't see anything yet that's because we also need to give it a stroke so I'm going to give it a stroke of green and uh, we also need to give it a stroke width uh, we'll make this one like 25 so it makes it really easy to see and again, spell things properly when you're doing it. There we go. So I get a nice a big stroke line going there. Um, there's my line. So my line is starting there and ending there. Now you might be wondering if um, you can do uh, a line that sort of goes to here and then moves and then goes somewhere else. That would be a path. And uh, at the moment, we're not going to look at paths in this video because they do get kind of complicated in how they work. A line is just a starting point, an ending point, and that is it. Um, for this video, we're not going to be looking at paths, like I mentioned, but we are going to look at polygons. So polygon is the pretty versatile. So once again, just like that. Now, the what a polygon is, is it pretty much means you can draw any shape you want. So I'm going to give this one a fill right away. Let's give it a fill of pink. And uh, what you do with a polygon is you give it points. 
Now with the points, it works a little bit like having a line, except you're, you're drawing a shape instead of drawing a line. And actually for this, I'm going to turn off my line so we can really see what's going on. And I'll try and draw something interesting in here. So my points, and it's not point, it's points, plural. Um, so first, I want to give it my first point. So my first point, let's go with uh, 50 down and 50 across. So my first point, they're going to be comma separated. So 50 and 50, there's the x and y axis. And then I put a space and I can do my second point. So I'm at 50, 50, which should be somewhere around here. And now I want to go all the way across. So on my y axis, I want to stay the same. But on my x axis, I want to go across. So I'm going to do 200 to go across, but I'm going to keep at, at 50. And I'm going to hit save, but we're not actually going to see it change because I don't have a I need a third point before my polygon starts taking shape. Uh, on like a line, which is always just along two points, a polygon needs at least three uh, points to start getting something. So for this one, we'll do 200, 200. So I'm already at 250, and then we're going to go all the way down. I'll hit save, and now you can start seeing it come together. Now it's automatically closing this off on me here, but I can come and add another point on here. So let's do 50, 200. And there we go, I made a square. Now that's kind of boring that I made a square though, right? So in between these two points, let's add another one of like 125, 125, which should be directly in the middle. And I'll hit save. And now we have a bit more of an interesting shape there. And even here we have my first point. My second point could be in the same place, 125, 125. I'll hit save. And I can do that. And I can technically come and add as many points into this as I want and end up drawing sort of any type of shape I want, as long as that shape is made up of straight lines. I can't use curves and things like that on a polygon. To do that, it's where you're going to be using a path. And paths are out of the scope of what I'm covering right now. And for the more complicated things in general, I'd be using software um, to generate my SVG. Uh, you know, I'd actually draw it in with a pen tool instead of writing it all out. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, there's a lot more to SVGs than what we just looked at. There's paths, there's groups, there's a viewport, and a bunch of other stuff. And the viewport is a really important one, so that will be what we're covering in the next video. But until then, I just want to give a big thank you to my patrons. Uh, this video topic is was voted on by them, and it's been clearly a really uh, popular topic idea based on the comments and the responses to the first video in the series. So thank you so much, guys. Also, just... Uh, if you have any comments or questions about whatever I did in this video or just other ideas or whatever it is you want to ask about, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.